Greetings, my fellow free blood sovereign thinkers. Thank you for tuning to uh, O3 Podcast. My name is Craig, transmitting from the beautiful land of enchantment, and today's date is Saturday, April 18th, 2020. Yes, you see many folks out there are doing these rallies, protesting, which is good. However, I have to say, add that too, have the shops open up. I know a couple of, um, one shop in Alabama, the barber shop, wanted to reopen for business, and the police came in and intimidated the customers for paying them fines and all that. And the question I have for these fellow officers, that's going to how you raise your kids to be a goody two-shoes, a delegated Uncle Tom, a yes man, a doormat. Yeah, people like that, I have, I, I have the right to call you vultures out, you psychic vampires. Because why? Because you wear a uniform and a badge, you're entitled to do whatever the hell you want. You failed history. That's the damn truth. And I'm not here going after the police as a whole. But you got these rogue elements that will do anything for a paycheck. They will drop their pants, spread their butt cheeks, and go, give it to me, master. Ooh, that feel good may have another. You're part of the problem, not the solution. Regardless of what people think about the whole COVID-19 epidemic, pandemic, scamdemic, I'm not saying it's a, tr- it's a total hoax, but the things they're planning by design is a monumental deception. Here are all these ludicrous solutions and ideologies that are going to shove it down our throats. A lot of folks out there haven't remembered a damn thing the lessons of 9-11. Bunch of obtuse individuals, illiterates, can't comprehend a pimple between your legs, symbolically speaking. And, of course, the mainstream garbage media, they want to witch hunt one guy for everything. It's all President Trump's fault, and you got all these glamboyant stooges out there. They try to make themselves look so pristine. Give me a break. Been around for a long time. I hear the bogus garbage wherever it's left or right. It doesn't matter. The whole Mickey Mouse Club faction game. Her conformity. Conformity 101. So that's just how I look at things. Read between the lines. Lines, the lies, deceptions etc. So, I'm not going to go too far, but there's a couple of things I'm going to check out here. Just, um, I'm a, I'm a subscriber to the AmericanFreePress.net, so I'm going to be talking a few things here. Just winging it as we speak, but no, the first one just came across the board, how Andrew Cuomo, the hot shot and all that, Talked about pointing their fingers and so forth. But he is just another globalist puppet, just like his father. So, if you want to read these articles, I recommend I said, I recommend you do a subscription for this uh, establishment. Because they're not partisan bias, but cut through the chase on principle. That's, what, that's how they do things. And of course... Observe responsibly. So, it says this one here is issue 1718 for April 20th and 27th. All right, so it's talking about Andrew Cuomo. Take time to take a deeper look at a man and the dynasty. This is by S.T. Patrick. As it reads here, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo has suddenly risen to the top of Democratic Party, which lists as he continues to navigate the politically charged COVID-19 pandemic. A recent New York Post poll found that Democrats favored dropping Joe Biden from the ticket and replacing him with Cuomo. (laughs) Follow the herd, just another cow. I understand about Joe Biden because he's 
Twilight Zone, right? And I'm not wishing ill on his health, but I am not too crazy about that man. Joe Biden. Rico's at Rico acts number one fan. That's Joe Biden. Cuomo is part of a politically connected family. His father, Mario, was a former governor of New York, and his brother, Chris, is the host of Cuomo Prime Time on CNN. There has been escalating draft Cuomo movement among leading left-leaning analysis on social media. I'm trying to figure out why. They are urging the party to replace an increasingly mentally feeble and accused sex predator Biden with Cuomo. Yet due diligence dictates that deeper look be taken at the Cuomo political dynasty. Cuomo was a Secretary of Housing and Urban Development under President Bill Clinton from 1997 to 2001 and won the New York New York's gubernatorial election in 2010. I think it's a little tongue tied at times, you know. He has recently handled the COVID-19 pandemic in a way that has been very public with nearly every press conference being covered by the national media. Cuomo was one of the first governors to issue a stay-at-home order for his state to close non-essential businesses and to push hard for importation of necessary personal protective equipment, PPEs, for New York's medical staff. The mainstream media has portrayed Cuomo as a strong leader throughout, creating a portrait for him as a Anti-Trump icon. Yeah, Benito Mussolini in disguise. Yeah, I think it's like probably him and Rudy Giuliani are cousins, right? Wouldn't be surprised. Acknowledging that Cuomo is being discussed for bigger things in his side, inside his party should lead to an admittance that there have been problems in the past for both Cuomo and his family. As recently as February 2019, Cuomo's polling numbers bottom out at 43% after he signed legislation expanding authority, expanding abortions, and more severe restrictions on the right to bear arms. Yes, but Nietzsche Mussolini would be proud of this man, right? He felt so strongly about posing the boycott, divestment, sanctions movement against Israel that he said, if you boycott Israel, New York State will boycott you. Yes, a Zionist stooge, another Israeli Uncle Tom. As I always say, as will be my friends. And I don't mean on uh, Israeli, on a political perspective. Orwellian indeed. When New York City was experiencing several subway disasters, Cuomo strongly urged Metropolitan Transportation Authority to accept labor union contracts. They were very pro-worker. Journalists then reported that Cuomo had taken $165,000 from the union during his campaign, so which is disturbing indeed, you know. Cuomo's closest campaign aides have been caught up in corruption charges. Joseph Prococo, a close aide who Cuomo called Mario Cuomo's third son, was indicted for felony charges of solicitation and bribes and honest services and fraud. Aid Todd Howe was also indicted. Cuomo set up in set up the Marlin Commission to investigate corruption in New York politics, but he quickly disbanded. And after the commission moved into areas that could be very damaging to Cuomo's reputation. In the wake of the fiasco, there was the disbanding of the Moreland Commission, a close friend quoted by the New York Post as saying that Cuomo did this with Moreland as he done it with so many things. He creates a narrative, crackdown on corruption, we'll go, we'll get to the bottom of this, but it's totally cynical, manufactured, and never real or sincere from the start. The governor's Fathers Mario was long discussed it as a sure presidential candidate, but he never chose to run a serious campaign. There were always prevalent, prevalent rumors of deep mob connections that ran through his in-laws. Biographers have also written that Clinton practically begged Cuomo to accept Supreme Court nomination in 1993. Cuomo refused that as well. <laughs> Beg, oh, good grief. 
After reviewing an executive order stating that governors cannot accept donations from an appointee, it was discovered that Cuomo had done just that. He had taken $890,000 from 24 appointees, and he had accepted $1.3 billion from the families and businesses of appointees. Cuomo has been a hot candidate who isn't running. Officially, it hasn't, granted, hasn't garnered one primary vote or elector. For approximately three weeks, this isn't enough for proper vetting to take place. But history tells enough tales. If the Democratic Party does draft Cuomo at the Milwaukee Convention, it will have accomplished one thing. Every single vote made by every single primary voter in every single Democratic primary will have been rendered null and void. Historians will blame COVID-19 for the chaotic primary season, but there is no virus that explains the supreme debacle that was the DNC's Iowa caucus. The rolling out of the red carpet for Michael Bloomberg and blatant changing of debate rules to exercise, exercise Hawaii Representative Tulsi Gabbard from all party proceedings. For all the chad chatter liberal talking heads do about voter suppression on the right. Pushing Cuomo will cancel the electoral will of every voter who stood in line to take in part in the twisted process. It would be the last democratic decision made by the party in at least at a century. Well, well, well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, friends, that's why I don't feel the hype. When I hear all this rhetoric of people manifesting and they go, oh, I hate Trump. Yeah, we love you. We want to worship you. We want someone to lead us into the pits of depression or tyranny. That's Andrew Cuomo. Like father, like son. <laughs> That's why I'm not a big fan of mainstream garbage media. Every time I hear see, like CNN, for an example, I just start laughing. I drive people crazy. I go, what do you want to hear this clown for? Come on, folks. Gotta look at the bigger picture and um, see for yourself how much of a deceptive fool Andrew Cuomo is. Yeah, corruption always pays, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something. I'm, gonna, I'm just like browsing through here. Oh, you know what? I, I'd like to check this one out here about election 2020. Why Sanders lost? Sanders would have played hardball, and it cost him the ball game. And let's see what Mr. Bennett has to say here. Kenneth, Doctor Kenneth B Barrett. In on April 8th. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders dropped out of the presidential race, effectively conceding the Democratic nomination to billionaire backed up mach back machine politician Joe Biden. Sanders capitulated three months earlier than in the previous election cycle. His surrender to Hillary Clinton came on July 12, 2016, 10 days before WikiLeaks emails showed Hillary has conspired with Democratic Party officials to steal the nomination. Seth Witch, the run young man suspected of leaking those emails, may have paid it with his life. Sanders never protested. I wonder why. Sanders called for a revolution against the billionaires and the political hacks. <laughs> okay, my fellow sh cows and sheep, we're going to have a revolution. Get your cowbells out. Go, say boo, boo, say ba, ba. He tried to radically change the Democratic Party, which has been a party of, by, and for bankers and CEOs, not ordinary working people. At least since the Bill Clinton era, Sanders wanted to return the party to the working class roots. It's working class roots. He proposed raising minimum wage to a $15 an hour, ending tax deductions for rich people and corporations, raising taxes on the rich, and breaking up the two big to fail banks. You know, same same rhetoric, different package, right? Different day. Massively investing in rebuilding America, American infrastructure, ending so-called free trade agreements, enforcing antitrust legislation, joining the rest of the world in establishing universal health care and free or near-free college education and much more. Tragically, Bernie's attempt to radically change the nature and direction of the Democratic Party 
has miserably failed. Why? To begin to formulate an answer to that question, we need to look no further than across the political aisle. Donald Trump's 2016 assault on the Republican Party succeeded beyond Trump's wildest dreams. The, the Make America Great Again MAGA movement triumphed because Trump channeled right, righteous anger that has been growing among Northern Americans who correctly recognize that they are being systematically disenfranchised by an unspeakably corrupt elite. Unlike Sanders, Trump never pulled punches against political parties and the party establishment behind them. Trump humiliated Jeb Bush by blaming his war criminal brother George W. for 9-11. He suggested Ted Cruz's father may have participated in the JFK assassination. With, the, with those two roundhouse punches, Trump harnessed the simmering unconscious fury of the American people who knowingly or unconsciously that top members of their nation's leadership were complicit in the JFK and 9-11 coups. With his street fighting style, Trump utterly annihilated the Republican Party establishment that had the establishment, that establishment tried harder to cheat him out of the nomination. Trump wouldn't have rolled over the way Bernie has. He would have encouraged his supporters to vent their wrath and the nation might have been brought to a standstill. Once Trump was elected, he stocked the swamp with the nastier creatures than the Obama, Obama had. Trump put John Bolton and Mike Pompeo, both psychotic warmongers, in charge of foreign policy. At Treasury, he empowered the rob the poor and give to the rich Zionist mobster Steve Mnuchin. He has made he made his culture kosher Nostra son-in-law, Jared Kirshner, everything czar. All of Trump's economic policies have favored the super rich at the expense of the middle class. Now Trump has handed the keys to the Federal Reserve, the Treasury, and much of the world economy to the biggest, most corrupt Wall Street firm ever, BlackRock, whose capo, capo Larry Fink was responsible for the 2008 subprime lending debacle. Fink is now merrily printing trillions of dollars for himself and his friends, while ordinary Americans may get a couple of thousand dollar checks to compensate them for their lost jobs and livelihoods. Like this, come on, peasants, here's your crumbs. Ah, you know? Exactly. Remember that movie, um, the Mad Max movie, when that one guy had he had control of the water and they all and he opened it up for a little bit and they all like, oh like, very similar, man. Like part of um the whole Submissive, uh, um, submissive or um, masochist, um, masochistic uh, mindset. So, Trump, Trump harnessed popular, populist anger, rode it to victory, then betrayed his supporters. But despite that betrayal, he did succeed in remaking the Republican Party. It will never again be a party of gene genteel country club notables. Sanders, he had chosen to be a street fighter like Trump, could have channeled the same. The same populist rage all the way to the White House. He could have annihilated the pro-billionaire globalist Democratic establishment, returning the party to its roots, and very likely changing America for the better. Instead, Sanders repeatedly allowed himself to be cheated by the Democratic leadership with a barely a whimper of protest. In 2016, Sanders polled almost 10 points better against Trump than Hillary did, in 2020, he polled better against Trump than Biden did. Has Sanders gone on the offense, exposing the many Clinton and Biden scandals, including serial sexual pre um, predation? He could have annihilated both corrupt hacks and the party plutocrats behind them. Has Sanders exaggerated Biden's segregationist history? He could have eliminated Biden's African-American support and won possibly resoundingly on Super Tuesday. What Sanders apparently doesn't understand is that Americans are understandably furious at their national leadership and nearly ready to start building guillotines. Playing nice with the bankster old Democratic Party hacks, 
even when they systematically cheated him, was never going to work. So thanks, so thanks to Bernie's spineless, spinelessness, the 2020 election will feature the fake populist Republicans versus the pro-establishment Democrats in a race Sanders might just have won. <laughs> wow. So all you uh, um, Bernie bros or Bernie supporters should really pay attention to that. Because one thing I know for sure, you got so many clowns in there, technology, people are learning these things, and you know what? It could be, it could be a hell of a lot better. Like I said before, like with the whole, like with the whole um, 2016 election, the reason why President Donald Trump became president was two things. One, in 2012, the GOP shafted Ron Paul, and in 2016, the DNC screwed over Bernie Sanders, whether you like those men or not. It's just a fact. When you got you when you got corporate hands on there funding the way mainstream garbage media belling up licking the boots is what you get. Bottom line is this folks, the presidency, presidential candidates, they're running to be an elected ambassador. All you gotta do all you gotta do is read Article two of the US Constitution. It's that not that hard. It's self explanatory. But you got past Congress is telling everybody Hey, we can do this. Give it to them. They're okay, so they voted for it. That's one thing you got to look at. So, um, I'm just trying to see where I can find here. Some things here. Of course, um, nah, let's, uh, let's talk about religious freedom here. This one's pretty pretty cool. I'll just hit some of the footnotes on here. Then I'm gonna hit, hit a different article. Hold on here. All right, quarantine versus your rights. This is um written by Mark Anderson, and this is here it says fame freedom activists push back. Clive and Buddy speaks with AFP about his son's effort to ensure the right to worship. So Mr. Anderson has to say, some significant pushback against COVID-19 crackdown that's affecting our Bill of Rights stated on April 3rd in Boise, Idaho. Noted freedom activist Almond Bundy and a few dozen others, contrary to Governor Brad Little's COVID-19 edict banning group, ga group gatherings, met inside an old factory to discuss how to protect and restore the const a constitution. That's in effect, being repealed, one COVID-19 control measure at a time. Amon is is the son of a famed Nevada rancher and constitutionalist, Clive and Bunny, and his wife Carol. And of course, everyone says the Bunnies are racist. <laughs> Stop listening to those edict propaganda, okay? It really doesn't matter what numbers there are when it comes to coronavirus. It really doesn't matter if it's real or not, if it's rampant or not, whether it's a pandemic or not. Because it still does not give government officials the right to infringe upon our rights, Amin said at the gathering. Those ga at the gathering decided that one of their first actions would be to peaceably assemble for an Easter, an Easter church service on April 12th. According to an interview, Amin conducted the Free Thought Project. Several of the 100 plus attendees came from outside of Idaho and attended the service. Amon, who in recent years had become emblematic of efforts to resist government overreach, posted video footage of the church service on Facebook. Speaking at the podium, a blazonized, a blazoned with the words defy martial law, a minister opened the service by praying, Thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for allowing us this opportunity to gather together. We pray that your spirit will be there, that your anointing will be here, and that will touch each soul as we honor you and talk about our resurrection. We will not operate in fear today, the pastor said. Another local pastor, Diego Rodriguez, moderated the service, which included an uplifting sing-along, sing a video of pre-recorded Easter service featuring the black gospel singer. After the video, Rodriguez remarked, 
there was a time in America and when it wasn't a news story to have it to have church there was no reason for us not to have a service the pulpit has never been pl a place in historically that is supposed to ignore the current events of our day particularly when oppression or tyranny is involved the church should be a place where people can come to receive guidance instructions inspiration healing deliverance and most of all the truth um, and himself briefly addressed the serve the service saying it's part of the right that have been given to us shake hands share our love and our appreciation of each other when your liberty has been taken from you then you begin to understand how it is important it is we stand for it when you believe in Christ and the example he showed us you will never infringe upon your neighbor's rights therefore where there is Christ there is liberty and um, yeah I just almost done here and it is a photo of this it goes at press time Carol Bundy confirmed that her son was unusually busy AFP was able to speak with Clive and Bundy while knowing that he recently reread the First Amendment the elder Bundy who's no stranger to face and tyranny head-on told AFP on April 13th I have always felt like that uh, that the Constitution was inspired here we are actually turning against the First Amendment First Amendment speech worship assembly we're supposed to be able to petition our leaders Bundy said in my in my way of thinking we have to be cautious about this virus and I feel like that's what our country is doing and that's what the world is doing but on the other side I look at it like a political thing I don't know where we've ever lost too many freedoms I mean we're almost down to the point of having no freedoms left if we continue with the attitude of the people and the way the nation's running and there is no group of people this is not affecting very much and that's the bureaucrats have they totally taken control of this take taken hold of this nation good question ask about the reliability of the COVID-19 statistics that the nation is force fed by the massive media cartel and government health bureaucracies he replied well you want it you want it you want to trust it you're here you hear one report and of course the next day you hear another report we don't know whether the person died of a heart attack or from this virus but they're still counting it that way while describing Nevada as a re real restrictive and noting that it's surreal to see a world-famous Las Vegas uh, 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 strip deserted Cliven said a say said a saying common around Nevada is that when the churches and casinos both agreed to shut down meaning heaven and hell agreed that it must be serious Bundy reflected on the standoff and his subsequent arrest and the arrest of Amon and others six years ago when the Bundy family scores of supporters resisted a federal attempt to seize the elder Bundy's cattle over the grazing fees dispute the country is built on the principle of freedom and liberty and I think we the people are going to have to make a judgment here when I was in jail and all those indictments and decisions came down I always wonder who's pushing the button I watched the Bureau of Land Management and the Forest Service and Park Service they brought an army against me and now you see the these health departments it is their turn to bring an army against the people well, you cannot disagree with him on that. Wow, that's why you gotta question these. Um, you always gotta question the authorities. So uh, that's why I'm one, one of those guys that always like to look at things in the bigger picture. Kio Bono, who benefits? And yes, our natural rights are ours. Our natural rights are cherished forever, regardless of what they think. When they try to say you gotta give up your freedom for security can't do this you can't do that they're just trying to sell you a con job yeah, and I always said in my past to always remain vigilant on your health regardless 
I'm not afraid to walk around and meet people and so forth. But you got others that are hiding in the corners. There's some people are sitting on their own damn neighbors. Pathetic. But the bottom line is this, folks. To fight this pandemic, we have to honor and protect our Bill of Rights culture. Rather than federal, state, or local. It doesn't matter. All right, so enough of that with the American Free Press. Let's keep this one handy. And one more here. This is from the Epoch Times. Senator asked FBI director to provide all records on Crossfire Hurricane. This is by Mimi, uh, Mimi Nguyen Lee. As it reads here, said Senators Ron Johnson, Republican from Wisconsin, and Chuck Grassley, Republican uh, from Iowa, and a letter to Ray question how much Russian disinformation influence had affected the FBI's investigation. They said it recently declassified information on the Steele dossier, which showed that a portion of the dossier likely was a product of a Russian disinformation campaign. Johnson, chairman of the Senate Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee, and Grassley, chairman of the Committee of Finance, asked Ray to provide by 30 all intelligence records received or reviewed by the FBI's Crossfire Hurricane Team and related FBI records. Crossfire Records was the FBI's code name for its counterintelligence investigation into the Trump campaign. In July 2016, the FBI launched its investigation based on information contained in the Steele dossier. The dossier was produced by Fusion GPS and former British intelligence officer Christopher Steele. The Hillary Clinton campaign and the Democratic National Committee funded the dossier. Yeah, a Bushite funding the dossier, right? Then Special Counsel Rob Mueller took over the FBI's investigation in May 2017 after a 22 month investigation found no evidence that Trump or his campaign knowingly conspired or coordinated with the Russian government to sway the outcome of the president 2016 presidential election. Department of Justice Inspector General Michael Horowitz released a report on December 9th found that 17 significant inaccuracies and omissions in the application of renewals for the Foreign Intelligence Service Act warrant that the FBI used to spy on campaign on Trump campaign advisor Carter Page. Johnson and Grassi on John, uh, January 28th wrote to Attorney General William Barr requesting that our footnotes in Horowitz's report to be classified. The Department of Justice released the footnotes on April 2nd. Since then, we received the classified versions of those and other footnotes that they revealed disturbing facts about the FBI's investigation. The Crossfire Hurricane team of investigative files included at least two intelligence reporter, reports, stating that key parts of the reporting from Christopher Steele, reporting that played a central and essential role into the decision to request FISA orders were part of a Russian disinformation campaign the two senators wrote in their latest letter. The senator also noted that footnotes contain information that directly contradicts statements provided by the FBI officials in the OIG report, which is Office of Inspector General. We are deeply troubled by the crossfire hurricane team's awareness and of apparent indifference to Russian disinformation, as well as by the grossly inaccurate statements by the FBI official in charge of the investigation and a supervisory intelligence analyst, the Senate senators wrote. Again, citing the newly released footnotes, Johnson and Grassley wrote, the FBI knew that Russian intelligence was targeting Christopher Steele's company that Steele relied on sources affiliated with Russian intelligence and at least two of Steele's reports were described as a product of a Russian disinformation campaign. Because these facts show the attention, means, and ability to plant Russian disinformation in Steele's report, they suggest that the prevalence of such disinformation in the FBI's crossfire hurricane investigation may be widespread. Ah, uh, you know, just one of those things, the whole song and dance. Oh, you can't like this guy, we'll just make things up. But, but people will buy because they hate him. Yeah, you know how that goes. Uh, look, I'm no Trump worshiper, okay? But when I heard about their whole Russian collision, I just laughed my ass off. Excuse me, that's just how I am. I just, I found it hysterical. It's like one big comedy show to another. 
But if you say if it was a really intelligence or scientist intelligence, you know, then they, they call you anti-Semitic. There's a lot of claims on that about Israeli organizations or uh, scientist organizations who are influencing our uh, elections and so forth and our political realm. And uh, that's, kind of, that's why I say that John Jay warns about this in Federalist Papers 2 through 5. It's obvious, folks. So, um, <laughs> well, remember, they say birds of a feather flock, birds of the same feathers flock together, right? So, hey, that's why I tell people, choose wisely, go through, go through these people's, uh, like, when you get these candidates and so forth, follow their track record. There's no reliable information out there. Library of Congress, you can look at how they voted, who's campaigning them, opensecrets.org. Uh, you got technology, you got information at your fingertips. You Utilize it. So, hey, that is how it goes. All right, folks, that's it. I thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share us on the social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, if you send something interesting you want to check out, whatever you do, please send your correspondence with the quorum. Furthermore, I will leave the footnote on my Spreaker page, just to let you know, again, if you want to look at, read the articles from America Free Press on this matter, subscribe, it's worth it, the 25 bucks, it's worth it, so um, observe responsibly, as always. Okay, once again, thank you for your time, plus always remember that the maniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves, keep on spreading the love, and may your guardian spirits be with you.